here at the Microsoft desk, or Microsoft booth, I should say. And I'm um, speaking here with Jeff. Show me what you got, Jeff. This All is right. Silverlight. Yeah, this is the, the Silverlight demonstration area. Um, I've got a few cool things to show you. The first is a, a, a technology called Deep Zoom. Um, and the idea here is obviously you've seen mosaic shots like this at like a mall store or something like that. Um, but this is an incredible amount of visual data. Uh, think of how many images are, are made up of this. If we dive in here a little bit, you can see there's just tons and tons of different images of shoes and people and things like that. And we can zoom in quite, quite a bit to, to look at these things. Um, and it, the, the resolution turns out really, really well. Um, but if we zoom all the way back out to the, the Michael Jordan shot, think of how many images are here. Um, and think of how long it would take you to look at this kind of stuff if you were just clicking next, next, next. So I can zoom in anywhere I want just by using my scroll wheel. Um, and I can check out what's basically just an uploaded set of a bunch of shoes. This is using a technology in Silverlight called Deep Zoom. Uh, it's incredibly simple to put together. And if I click on a specific picture even, uh, come on, there should, be, uh, there should be metadata for a lot of these photos as well. So as I, as I click on one, hopefully, uh, I'm not having a lot of luck with these photos. But the idea is, is that each photo could also have uh, metadata associated with it as well. Uh, a good example of this actually, I have uh, the uh, Hard Rock Cafe site is using a very similar uh, technology to show a lot of their memorabilia from their restaurants. And as soon as this one loads, you'll see that again, we have a very similar look and feel. Um, but as we look here, uh, for example, there's a, a Bo Diddley guitar down here. And uh, they, they took pictures of all of these on the restaurant wall. So you can see I have a bunch of metadata about what this guitar is. And if I zoom in, they did a really good job at uh, paying attention to making sure these things are crisp and clean. But if you look right here, you can actually find someone's thumbprint on this guitar, which is amazing. You can zoom in that close. And if I scroll down here, you can see that they did actually leave it on the wall when they took a picture. You can see the table that it's hanging over. So, I mean, this is a high and high resolution photo, and we're looking at hundreds, uh, if not thousands of them uh, when we bring back a giant set of data like this. It's also sortable, so if I want to see just the Beatles data, it'll bring out just those for me. There's a lot of really neat things we can do here, and this is incredibly simple to do in Silverlight. There's not a whole lot of work really at all. Uh, so that's a little bit about that. Um, other Silverlight strengths, we've talked about um, you know, kind of interaction with a large set of data there, but this is, um, this is actually Netflix. Uh, I loaded up uh, Batman Returns, the, the one with the penguin with Danny DeVito. Uh, but this is actually streaming live. You can see that I can jump to different segments of the movie. I don't have this pre-queued or anything. Um, it's going to buffer up video, and, uh, and now we're just watching the video. Christopher Walken at his finest. Um, but we're, uh, we're actually streaming this live across the web, and uh, if you've ever used Netflix online before, this is all using Silverlight to, to get it done. Uh, in addition, if, you've, if you watch the Olympics online, all the Olympic stuff was streamed uh, via Silverlight as well. One last thing I'll show you in Silverlight is uh, a technology called Photosynth. Um, and again, what, what I have here, every one of these boxes that I'm rolling over, um, is actually a photo. So they went through uh, the Stargate ship and they actually just took a bunch of pictures. And you can see that as I, uh, as I click on one of these, I can go look at that specific photo, right? So you can kind of see the outline of that picture. But I can use my arrow keys to actually walk through this area. And what it does is it actually maps all of the pictures together and says, hey, I recognize that these two things are the same. So you can create a very simple virtual tour. I'm actually you know, turning around inside this hallway, uh, backing up, walking around. So it looks as if I'm there, but this is all just a composite of about 50 pictures. Um, and it, do, it stitches all this stuff together for you automatically. Um, you can do this on your own. I did this with my house. Um, if you go to fotosynth.com, uh, you can see that there are tons and tons and tons of projects here. Um, let me turn off my movie. Um, you can see that this is, uh, this is someone's studio abandoned room, it looks like, but someone came in and took a bunch of pictures. Again, a very, very similar idea, and we can rotate around and play with this. Um, the idea behind Photosynth is that we're able to take a large set of data, again, a large set of photos uh, of anything that anyone's ever taken. We could take a, a bunch of images from Flickr or whatever. They don't have to all be the same size or resolution or anything. And uh, what happens is, if we took all of the photos that have ever ever been taken, um, we end up with a, a pretty interesting virtual tour of any interesting place on Earth. Um, it allows you to kind of walk around and get a good feel for, for what those places are. All right, so here we are on a Windows 7 machine again. This is a very similar machine to the one we were just looking at. Um, this is an HP Touch Smart machine. Uh, this is a, a fully touch-enabled computer, so you can see I can take desktop icons, things like that, and move them around without having to use my mouse. Um, I do have uh, this application called uh, Microsoft Surface Globe that you can use on a multi-touch machine. And what I've actually got here is a, a fully loaded 
uh, version of uh, the, the United States here, but again, I can spin my globe around and I can I can look at Africa and the Middle East and, and things like that. That's no problem at all. But since we are here in Austin, I'm going to spend a little time coming down here. Uh, and as we dive into Austin a little bit, you can see that I'm just using a very familiar um, gesture just to get uh, myself where I want to go. And as we zoom in here a little bit, I think, and so what you can see here is it looks like uh, I'm underwater, I've got a bunch of fish that are hanging around, and if I run my fingers through this, you can see that I actually, it looks like I'm playing when touching with the water. If I go near the fish, they run away, um, but I can also create a heat pocket for them um, that makes them think, uh, maybe I should check that out, and so you'll see that they start getting attracted to my finger and all the fish will come right to me. If I let go, they'll stay, but if I want to make them run away, I can just stir the water a little bit and they run away. So uh, there's a lot of really uh, amazing things built into to Windows 7. Um, I don't have a, a ton of other demos to show you, but if you haven't seen Windows 7 before, there's a, there's a few that are pretty cool. One is uh, I have a, a window here and I know that um, I'm also gonna bring up Microsoft Word, let's say. And as I load this up, one of the things is a common problem you often have with, uh, with computing in general is the ability to copy and paste very easily between documents and things like that. And so as I'm doing some research, I know that I want to take data from this page and I want to put it into my Word document. So what I would generally do is something like this. I would have this one, I would, uh, I would bring this up, I would copy some data uh, out of here, and then I would just jump over to this one. And I bounce back and forth pretty readily, but if I just take this and kick these each to the side, you'll see that they each take up half the screen. Now I can just click and drag and move stuff back and forth without having to worry about copying and pasting all the time. And that doesn't look like it's going to want to work. Uh, so that's one cool little thing. Another one that a lot of people don't know about um, is the ability, I just want one window open, I want all the rest of them to be minimized. If I take this window and just shake it, all the other windows will get minimized. And if I shake it again, it'll bring that, those windows back for me. So there's a lot of little productivity gains and things like that. Also over here, you can roll over uh, this little icon in the corner. It'll show you where all of your windows are. So as I, as I open a few more windows, um, this is something that happens to people quite often. You, you lose things. So I'm just going to open a bunch of Windows Explorer windows here. And I'm going to move them all over the screen. So I'll put one here and one down here and uh, make this one a little different size. So as you're working with all these windows open, this doesn't look any different than most people's desktops at any regular time. I just lost that window that I resized, but if I roll over this, there it is, I can see the shape of it, right? So I know that I need to dig down and find it in there wherever, and if, uh, if I really wanted to, I can move this one, uh, move my Word document, and I can kind of see it hiding back here. I just want this one again, shake it, all my windows go away. So there's a lot of ways to make yourself uh, much more productive just by uh, little things like that. One other cool little thing, my last uh, little thing I'll show you, is the concept of libraries. Uh, what we actually have here is uh, is virtual collections of folders. So where I keep all my videos, you don't keep all your videos in one place. You might have a home server at home, you might have some in one place on here, you might have some on an external hard drive. Um, what you end up with is a, a, a smattering of videos across four or five different places. What a library allows you to do is say, hey, I keep my videos in these places. And so you can just create a list, and so when you click on videos, the videos library, it brings you a, a visualization of all of the places you, you said I keep my videos. And that way you don't have to go look in all of those different places, you can just collect them all here. The same is true of documents, music, pictures, um, but it's not just limited to those things as well. I can come in here and say I want a new library, and let's say I'm a software developer, I'm going to have projects uh, that I write code for. I now have a projects library um, that I can include a folder and I can go find whatever I want. So if I have custom libraries I want to create as well, um, I can do that too. So that's a little bit about Windows 7. Uh, again, there's tons and tons of new uh, advances and features, but that's a little bit about multi-touching in 7.